Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast, where we interview leaders on how they grow their people, how they grow themselves, and how they grow revenue. And before we get started with today's special guest, I wanted to remind you of a project that I'm working on. It's called The Happiness Project. And all we do is something really simple. We collect videos from people saying, hi, my name is Craig Northrup, and what makes me happy is, and just by sharing that, People watching those videos go, happiness isn't someday when I get the job, when I get the girl, when I get the house. Happiness is here today. It's all around us. And all you need to do is take a look. And the idea of these videos is to give people hope and go, wait a minute, I could do that today. So today's special guest has been the number one realtor in the US numerous times. His name is Craig Northrup. Craig, welcome to the program. Thank you very, very much. Very excited to be here. I uh, love to kind of address some of the topics you got ahead of you there. I want to make sure your screen is clear, though. I want to make sure that crisp clearness. I Well, I get a little fuzziness, but is that Yeah, okay? what's happening, uh, Craig, is, yeah, sometimes it gets a little fuzzy, but what this software does, we'll do a plug for Zencaster. Zencaster okay. records you in HD, audio and video on your computer, HD, me on my computer, and after our interview, it beams both pristine recordings up to the cloud, and they marry, and we both look handsomer than we actually are. That makes us all happier then. There you go. There so we go. Clarify that first. But very excited to be here. Very excited to kind of talk a little bit about what I think is the most hottest topic period out there. Uh, I know you and I chatted a little bit prior, and, and I think it, these topics are so relevant, so question oriented, and especially with the market the way it sits right now in the sense of growth and, 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 and limited inventory and raising interest rates and the war and, and inflation. You got all kinds of dynamics right now. What's the agent to do? Should I grow in this market? Should I become a team? These are all the great questions I believe we're going to address today. Brilliant. And just before we go further down this topic, I was talking to someone that owns uh, Keller Williams, Romania, and uh -huh. they're bordering uh -huh. on Ukraine. And they're just one of the real estate groups. So what they're doing is their realtors are driving to the border, picking up refugees in the homes that haven't been sold yet. They're giving them a place to live. And that's what realtors do. They connect with community. And when it comes time to take action, they step up. And that comes from leadership. And one of the things you did, Greg, is the screen was a little fuzzy. And when you're not a good leader, you're just like, I hope this works. When you're a great leader, you go, hold on, there's a problem going on here. And that's leadership. And so when we have someone who's a realtor who is successful, that gets an administrator and gets uh, another helper, and then they decide they are going to start a team. And then all of a sudden they go from being a realtor to a leader. Wow. So why don't you talk about, you know, when people should do that, if they should do that, and what would be the steps you would take to start a team and ensure you're successful? So I always say there's two types of teams. There's team by nature and team by name. And a team by name, just to be named a team because it's sexy, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend right. it that way. And by nature, naturally you should flow into it. Why, why should you do a team? Because it certainly is a it, it reach to more people, service more people, you have more opportunity out there and you grow others because by growing others, if you can get you what they want. If you can get them what they want, you always get what you want. And I think that's a philosophy of a good team leader. But first importantly, the number one principle of a good team leader is lead by example. You yes. have to first do it before you can ever grow it to, towards someone else's lives, right? So the first thing you have to do is prove it to yourself. Be that leader of your one. I was called leader of one before leader of many. So let's lead ourselves, have your goals set up. Honestly, to be a team leader, you really shouldn't be looking at team leadership under $10 million. It, 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 to be honest, that's sort of the threshold of saying, wow, right. I'm in a plateau where I'm starting to get busy. I need some help. I'd love to start grooming some others, things like that. Under $10 million, to be honest, you should be able to handle it yourself. That's really, my I first thought. And one of the things you said, which I think is critically important is you can be a manager and tell people what to do and give them some guidance. But unless you 
lead yourself and you know what your weaknesses are and are figuring out ways to overcome them. I'm still coming up with my weaknesses. It's an ongoing process and really knowing who you are and why you're doing it. And that self-leadership gives you the platform to be a leader for other people. Otherwise, you're just a manager and you're just a poser and not somebody that's uh, doing it for real. And being a leader doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It means when mistakes happen, you can rebound and overcome and also put up your hand and say, hey, something's going on. I'm going to talk to a, another team leader that's been through this. That all comes from inner strength and that comes from leadership. So if you were starting a new team today, Craig, you've reached the $10 million milestone. You've got one or two assistants and then how would you start looking for people to join you? Because it's different for different people, right? So walk us through that. How do you do the first three agent hires and get them to be successful? I think what you have to first do to your points, I say, figure out your whys and your weaknesses, right? And yeah. then find others that can build your strength on that, right? And you always say, you can't, you can't really figure out how to sell until you learn why you're selling, right? So why do you want to be a team? Define it, create a mission, create the reasons why you want to do it. Then it started attracting like-minded people, right? And so I, ideally people want to be or are attracted to teams for number one reason is rainmaker, right? You have to be a rainmaker. You have to want to give away leads. A lot of people don't like to delegate. A lot of people don't like to, you know, to, uh, you know, to, they think they can do it better. So if you can do, if someone else can do the task 70% of the way you do the task, delegate it. And that's where I learned with leads. They got better than I. I trained people better than I to handle these leads better. So first thing you start with a buyer's agent. You start yes. with somebody that can start with the buyers, start training them, get them that way. Often we allow them to be both the buyer and seller agent because I don't like the word buyer agent in general, but in general, first, I call it all the time agent, but ideally that's where you start because the easiest thing for a team leader to give away is the buyers first. Buyers first, right? Let them work on them, see them, train them, have them shadow you, have them be more you. It's you in different clothes. That's the philosophy of a really good leader, trainer, mentor, uh, you know, all the great things that come into play. Coach, all, all the team leader definition is mentor, you know, rainmaker, uh, leader, you know, uh, uh, you know, coach, you know, all this stuff. You're responsible for it. The minute you sign up for it, you can't look back because now you're responsible for other people's lives, their livelihood and all of that. Yes. So attract like minded. Uh, where do you find them? I think you find them, you have to decide when you grow up and you want to do a team, this is the why. Do you want to work with new agents and grow them to where they want to go? Do you want to start with mid-range? When we first started our team, it was two years experience. We didn't have a platform to teach uh, young and new agents, right? Because they take a lot of time. As team yes. leaders, you got to jump to that two-level, two-year level because either you're going to spend time you know, showing them how to write a contract, showing them how to do listings, or you're going to have them how to get more listings, how to get more sales, and you got to decide which leader you want to be. Now, with North Realty, we added all that with Elevate and all that. So our team leaders benefit from hiring because they get all the training of the, of the newbies that we didn't have before. And we do new uh, team training classes. So to your point, if you don't understand or know where to go to get to the next level, because every level has a different devil, go find it who has, right? And that's why uh, because we were number one in the nation in the team, we actually built the library of knowledge in our brokerage so that we have other team team leaders commemorate um, uh, every other month with other team leaders and we coach them consistently. That's what's lacking in the brokerage model. No broker is, brokers are scared of teams and they certainly know how to train teams because they've never been a team, right? And I think Makes that's sense. where we grow and have grown. So as starting, buyer agent first, be ready first. And it only takes one. Start with one. You don't need to get 10 people, 20. One. Start with one. Make them the best imitation of you. And then others will follow. So let me dig into that a little bit. So certainly the best imitation of you on one side. And at the same time, you were talking about, you know, you've got strength and weaknesses and you need to get people that can shore up your weaknesses and can do those things. So how do you square the two? Another version so of you versus so filling in the blanks. If I'm uh, a millennial right now coming in wanting to build a team, and let's just say I hit my 10 million threshold, I got my buyer agent, the next person I would go is, what don't I like to do? Do I not like the pro paperwork? Then get a mini you, right? Now you go administration. You go buyer agent first, administration second. The administration is really going to be your, your weakness uh, finder, not right. this one. The, the salesperson's got to mimic you. 
the, the admin has got to take on your weaknesses, right? I don't like paperwork. Therefore, I have uh, client care coordinators called minis. I don't, I, you know, I'm not really, I don't want to stage a house. So I have stagers already done that for you. I don't want to market. So you get a marketeer. I'm not good at social. Get a social media specialist. You know, get a videographer, which is all the video side. Things like that. Get that weakness one that you don't want to do while you're still grooming the salesperson. Nice. So we've got a team. Let's say we go to three people, four people. We're doing well. But now you've got different personalities. So how yeah. do you stay in integrity? Because you don't want to manage, you know, Judy one way and John another way. And there's a different set of rules for everyone that creates injustice and stuff. So how do you basically set the tone for the team, the culture for the team, so you attract the people you want and other people go, you know, this is not right for me. How do you do that piece before we go on to a mid-sized team? Everybody wants to be part of something. Yes. And they want to feel like they are. And then many, it's called inclusivity. One of our core values is inclusivity. They must feel included. You must treat everyone equal. And they must feel like they have a voice. So in order to do that, if you do that and make sure there's no favorites and all that, which is always the challenge as you grow. And the other challenge you get into, especially starting with three, is they feel like if you hire somebody, it takes away from their business. And you as a team leader have got to make them feel the bigger the, the, the family grows, the more opportunity grows as well with it. And I think that was a challenge as we were growing a team, especially on a small team scale first, is... They thought it would took away from the opportunity when it really actually maximized their opportunities because the more signs on the street and the more brand you get out there, a more awareness built the whole group up. And that's how we became number one in the nation, not by having 100 people. Your mid-sized team is how we got to be number one in the nation, not our big-sized team. There is so a big difference. How big was your team when it was mid-sized? Like how many agents? Mid-sized was 20, maybe 25. Maybe 25 tops is what got us number one in the nation through the recession. So it wasn't this hundred people and have to have people just to have people to have bodies. We call them ghost agents is not the, the, the model you want to get to. You want to be lean, mean, and be able to, to have that fighting machine. And what I mean by that is, is we have only full-time agents, ideally, right? If you do have part-time, then you better make sure you have some, some requirements for what part-time looks like. And then you better make them all follow some kind of code of dress. Because at this point, we're seeing a lack of professionalism in the way they're brought, they're showing up in flip flops, they're showing up in jeans. You know, you're going to have team leaders have more power than brokers do. So you utilize that power by making them show up on meetings on time, putting some disciplines together on accountability, all the great things there, great professional dress, all of that team leaders can do where brokers can't. And I think that's where team leaders owe it to the, the level of professionalism and keep our business this way that they need to start holding to a higher standard than than would be if I went on my own. Why 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 would I not stay on my own if I'm not held to a higher account of accountability, selling more houses and and feel part of something? What why wouldn't I just stay here? You better give them a reason of why they want to join a team. And that's part of where I think a good team leader doesn't do before they go start a team. They need to plan. They need to plan the strategy uh, and why did they want to do a team and then would they want to join my would they would people want to join, would I want to join my own team? Right? I always say that. Would right. I want to join my own team? Then, then this is why you don't want to be an individual agent, why beneficial of the team is right here. Brilliant. So just before we move to mid-sized team, what would be uh, three problem areas for small teams where they can derail or disband or basically the owner starts uh, earns less income because they're distracted with all the other things and not focusing on what's important? What would be three pieces of advice you'd give somebody that's you know got a small team so they uh, become a large team? Happens. We're calling the three C's of clothes, right? We'll use it here, right? First, you got to make sure they all care first, right? Because you're not going to get anywhere. If they don't care to be on your team, if they don't care right. about the sellers or buyers, they just don't care. They're the wrong player. And you should find out. I always say, well, they say hire slow and fire fast, right? I mean, I think you need to adjust and adapt and pivot fast. Right. Second, you need to see consistency in not only in their performance, but in your performance with them. Because consistency is such a problem in real estate that what happens is if, they, if they're not marketing themselves in any given way, and, or if they don't get the lead benefit from that, 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 that piece of marketing, they stop doing it, which is the biggest mistake anybody can do. So consistency and last is confidence. You won't be able to build confidence in a team member. They're going to have to have some instillions of confidence. And then you're going to, with the brand, build the confidence around the brand and who you are. But they got to bring some kind of, I call it vitamin C to the table. 
they have to have some confidence in what they do already because it's going to be you don't have the time and energy to build the confidence they're going to need. They're going to need to get them in a small group setting uh, because it'll take away from the others that you're trying to build. And then then what happens is the woe is me, the negative comes out. 97% yes. of our thoughts are negative. And then it becomes a, a, a team against the team leader, which is not a healthy environment. Craig, do I look fat in these jeans? No, never mind. This is a negative voice coming up. <laughs> exactly. So what is the relationship between competence and confidence? Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, competence means you have to understand, I call it empathy, right? I, competence has a lot to do with empathy and understanding and putting yourself in other people's shoes, being competent enough to do the job and, uh, and interpret the needs of the sellers better than anyone else. Competence is the confidence to be able to portray, to be able to portray that, uh, that, that with authority that you have the knowledge, experience, and the backing behind you. That's how I would say the two differ. So somebody in the industry that we know in the Baltimore area, great realtor, great team, and one of her team members is a rock star. And so one of the concerns is, I don't want this person to leave my team. And so they basically uh, you know, made sure that their needs are met and they take more of a leadership role and maybe even considering a deeper partnership. Because you know, when you find a rock star, it's not trapping them, but it's like, hey, let's build a home for you where we can build this thing together. So talk about when you get a rock star in your team, what's a good strategy? Should you keep them in your team? And if you should, how do you do that? Continue to add more value and get interested in what they're interested in and we'll, and find out where they want to go and go with them. It's very important to do that. You know, don't get intimidated by rock stars. I always say I'm not going to let them outperform me when I was a team leader. So that was one right. of my keys. So like I, I had, to, it pushed me harder to go more with them. And I always had to consistently add different value to them. But my value became what their value was. It wasn't my value always. It, be, it grew to where their values were. And then I kind of shared their values. If they were interested in Buffini, I got interested in Buffini. If they were interested in, in wanted to coach, I learned how to coach, you know, things like that. These are where you grow with your team that a lot of team leaders feel, I don't know, I guess not confident in, into a level that I consider rock stars. Don't, don't, if you don't want to be a rock star, don't be a team leader, right? Brilliant. You know, that's my first answer. So people go to a mid-sized team. They grow from a small team. Let's say they've got about 10 people in their team now. All of a sudden, you start getting new members into the team that come in that are rock stars. So we've got a team that's doing well. Then all of a sudden, we get someone that's like phenomenal. Sometimes that creates jealousy, that oh, human dude. kind of stuff. So how do you bring somebody that's got a lot of talent in so A, they feel welcome, and B, it doesn't intimidate the current team members? So how do you don't don't navigate make that? Exceptions, don't make exceptions or change systems around somebody regardless of their production, regardless of who they are, treat them all as equal, and the team will respect you for that. The nice. problem is we bring somebody in and we give red carpet and we do everything differently than we did with the others. And then, of course, there's going to be resentment, right? Because now they're the love child or whatever it would be. And, and so the problem was we, create, we are the problem and we are the solution. Make it very clear. We created that problem. If we treat them all equally, I don't care if it's a $500,000 house or a million dollar house or a $10 million house, I still treat the seller the same way, right? It's the same way with people. People are people. That's why we're in this business. Treat them all the same. Keep them on the same set of rules and explain to the ones that have been with you, you built the foundation to allow us to get to this rock star person. Now we're going to build with us all together and just elevate us all. Rising tides raise all ships. Brilliant. So sometimes uh, as a leader, you need to put your finger on what's happening in uh, the market, where profitability is. And sometimes you might take a uh, deviate from what you were doing in the past and say, okay, we're going to actually go more luxury market now, or we're going to go in this area. Change is difficult for a lot of people to handle. So how do you prepare the team for a change that you want to make as a leader? Because sometimes if you don't make the change, then you get into trouble. So how do you uh, frame the change and how do you get people to not get scared on the journey? So same way we did it when we went through COVID, over communicate, make them feel part of it. If they feel inclusive and part of the decision of it, then you have no problem. You see, sales isn't telling somebody it. It's called shopping with friends. It's called, hey, 
We're just going to go look at a new access accessory that's higher than we were before. We're not right. going to, oh, we're just going down this direction and we don't care who you are. A lot of team members, our team leaders don't communicate well with their team members. And so then, then they find out answers from someone else and then you lose trust in them. The minute you lose trust in a team member, lose trust in a team leader, it gets very challenging at that point. Brilliant. So Craig, since you've been doing this for a while, you've probably had uh, more than your fair share of screw ups. Uh, yes. So when you were a team leader, can you share some of the things that you know you learned like, oh my God, I made this mistake and this is how I learned it. This is how I fixed it. Do any of those come up? Yeah. So, well, again, one thing I learned is don't, don't hire a class you're not ready for, which is was the whole zero to two years. I learned that the hard way because I didn't have that. So again, pick your pick your thoughts, write it out. Uh, don't grow too fast. No reason to. There's no reason right. to. Listen, it's a, it's a, it's a journey, not a sprint. And you really got to understand that as a team because the problem with team teams is they tend to either when you start one, they start growing. Everybody starts wanting it. It's like a Oh my God, it's like really good pie. I use it, right? It's like everybody wants it. So be choosy on who you pick. We interviewed every one of them. Uh, in the beginning, were we a little more loose in the sense of who we picked? Of course we were, because we were new. We didn't know better. Right. We, we, we interviewed everybody. We, we checked their credentials. We obviously had some rules and regulations. They're the kind of things you grow into. The faster you get that and to determine the team you want to be when you grow up, the better and quicker you're going to get to where you want to go successful. Brilliant. Just before we close up, a couple of questions, Craig. So, Craig, what makes you happy? Happy. What makes me happy is making others happy. I'm about happiness of others. Now, I know that I can't always make everyone happy. The only way you can do that is sell ice cream, right? But ideally, for me, it's growth. It's watching others get where they want to go and that I was part of it in some way, shape, or form. Whether with me or not with me, I coach agents outside of my brokerage. It's not about that, but it's just kind of watching everyone around us grow. And when we don't, that makes me unhappy. Follow me, when I don't see them grow to their potential, I always say, I'm going to push you beyond what's expected, right? And when I do do that, I'm looking for you to, to also step up, go that extra mile always. And that's what makes me happy because they're the ones I call unsung heroes. They're the right. ones that do it day in, day out, that don't get noticed. I, that's what makes me happy when I recognize that. Brilliant. What's one piece of advice you would give our viewers and listeners that they could implement immediately to become better, stronger, faster, happier, sexier? What would you, what's that advice? Thing is find somebody that's doing what, where you want to go, find them, get with them. I, we, my wife and I flew around the country and met with them of people that were above where we wanted to go, sit with them. They'll all take a coffee. They'll all take a lunch utilize the world you're in and whoever's best in whatever profession, doesn't have to be real estate, any profession, find out who's doing what you want to be done, figure out how they did it, see what their journey is, ask the questions we're doing here, and you'll get to that path faster by listening to somebody that's already done it. And I, I don't think people do that enough. Like you said, in our brokerage, it's a library of knowledge. So we create that. So it's almost like right around you, surround yourself with other like-minded people. But most people are on their island on their own. Right, most team leaders are on their island on their own. Pick up the phone, call me. I'm getting an open invitation. You want to start a team? Nobody better. I know how to do it. I've been there. I know what a small team looks like, mid team looks like, big team looks like, and now I know it took a team and made them a brokerage. I've done it all, so I'd be happy. You know how many people actually call? Not many, and yeah. that's what's sad. I open the invitation to every panel I do. I open the invitation. I don't know whether I don't know what that is, but get over it. Make the hard calls. If you can't make a call to somebody better to talk through and learn from it, I'm not sure you're going to make hard calls to the clients and the team members that need to be talking to. So this was a lesson I learned uh, when I was like really young. Uh, Craig, you know, if you decided to give me a gift, which I hope you do, back way back when I'd be like, hey, no, Craig, man, uh, that's too much. You shouldn't have. And then somebody took me aside and said, hey, Umar, when you do that, you disrespect them. They want to give you a gift. Let them enjoy the gift of giving and just say thank you. And then the same thing is true here. You've got Craig who's done it all that a gift to Craig is asking his help or advice because that brings you joy. And why figure it out? If you have ego, I know it all. I guarantee you don't. And I bet you if we weren't on this podcast, I said, do you know it all, Craig? You'd say, nope, still learning. Always learning. And still Always going. Learning. Absolutely. And I'm willing to help others any given time period. 
That's what makes me happy. Back to your question, helping others, these podcasts, sitting here talking about it. anything we can do to help anybody be better than they were yesterday is my number one goal, my number one passion and, and is people. Brilliant. Craig, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, much appreciated. And this was the third one. We'll see you on the fourth one, I'm sure. You got it. Thank you, buddy. Have a great day. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results. 